Hi everyone, my name is Corey Campbell and I'm the Officer of Gallery Operations here at Japan Society. I'm going to be your host for some highlight videos of our spring exhibition, Life of Cats, selections from the Hiraki Ukiyo-e collection. We have all kinds of cats in this show. Everything from cats and beautiful women, to cats and play, to lions and tigers. We've got cats of all varieties for you. There's actually so many works in this exhibition that we've had to divide it up into two rotations. Rotation one is on view from Friday, March 13th until Sunday, April 26th. And then rotation two is on view from Wednesday, April 29th until we close on Sunday, June 7th. Approximately 46 works will be rotated out between rotations one and two. So there's plenty of reason for you to come and see the second rotation of the show if you've come and seen the first, because it will be almost a completely different show. Those 46 works account for almost half of the total works in the exhibition. So we've actually divided the exhibition up into five different sections. Cats and people, cats as people, cats versus people, cats transform, and cats in play. So we're actually going to go inside the exhibition right now and take a look at the first section, Cats and People. This particular work to my left is attributed to an artist named Isoda Koryusai. And this is called The Third Princess and Her Cat. And this is actually one of the oldest works in the exhibition. This work dates to circa 1770. Now, this is a particular type of print called a hashirae, literally meaning pillar picture, because these, this vertical format was meant to literally be hung on a pillar. So this is actually a scene taken from classic Japanese literature. This is a scene from The Tale of Genji, written in the 11th century by Murasaki Shikibu. The Tale of Genji is historically called the world's first novel, and it is the world's first novel written by a woman. Here in this scene, we see the third princess and her beloved pet cat. Now it's important to note that cats were not introduced to Japan until the mid 6th century by ships coming from China bringing Buddhist scrolls and relics with them. Because these scrolls and relics were on paper, it was very important to protect these religious icons from vermin. And so cats were initially brought to Japan as guardians of these sacred scrolls. Then by the time of the third princess, about 500 years later, cats had moved from being guardians to being loyal and beloved pets, typically only kept by people of the higher rank of nobility because they were still considered a very exotic animal. In this scene from the tale of Genji, the pet cat has accidentally knocked down the blinds, separating the third princess from the courtyard. And in that moment when she is visible to the courtyard, the young courtier Kashiwagi sees her and falls in love with her. And it leads to a doomed romance between the two. The second section of the exhibition is dedicated to images of cats as people. And this section carries on the very important art historical tradition that you see in much of Japanese art. And that tradition is giga, or caricature. Caricature has long been an important part of Japanese art, and the Edo period was no exception to that rule. As a matter of fact, it could be argued that in the Edo period, giga hit its height of popularity. In this particular print, this is a very unusual print because as matters of economy, very rarely woodblock carvers would carve two very separate images into the same woodblock. And that is exactly what has happened here. Our image at the top, cat crossing to eat, is parroting a very popular style of street performances in the Edo period. In Japanese, it was called Rankui Watari, literally meaning pile jumping. Here, what Hiroshige has done is he's replaced our acrobats with cats and replaced the piles of wood with sticks of dried bonito. So he's changed this from a scene of acrobatic daring do to a scene of cats just trying to get a snack. You may recognize some of these little fellows because when you come here and come and see the exhibition, we have actually lifted these cats 
from the print and each one of them is on a separate admission sticker. So you will actually be able to take one of these little guys home with you when you come and see the show. The third section of the exhibition is dedicated to images depicting cats versus people. So in this section, cats go from being beloved pets or stand-ins for humans to actually our enemies. And a lot of these scenes come from a very classic uh, depiction of cats in Japanese folklore called the Nekomata. And the Nekomata is a mythical cat that after it reaches a certain age in its life, it gains the ability to transform into a human, speak like a human, and develops an insatiable desire for human flesh. So a lot of these scenes in this section are pulled from Kabuki plays whose theme is based on the Nekomata, like this scene here. This work is called From the 53 Station to the Takedo Road, Scene at Okazaki. And this is by one of the masters of ukiyo-e, Utagawa Kuniyoshi. In this scene here, we have two heroes who are walking along the Tokaido Road, and they have stopped at Okazaki. And they have come to an inn that is run by a kindly old woman. So they go through the day, nothing weird seems to be going on, until they're walking around that night and they see this giant shadow of a cat being projected onto a reed blind. And so when they pull the reed blind down, they discover that this kindly old woman who's been running the inn is in reality the spirit of the cat stone. So the fourth section of the exhibition is called Cats Transformed. This is where we move away from these very kind of idealized scenes that we've seen in ukiyo-e previously, and we're moving more into the modern period. And here, this is another Hashira-e, and this particular print is called Watanai Subduing a Tiger. The reason why I specifically want to talk about this work is because cats are not indigenous creatures to Japan. Japan has no native lions or tigers. So when artists like Katsukawa Shune here wanted to depict a tiger or a lion, they used house cats as their models. And you can see in the tiger right here at the bottom of the print that something is a little off, and you may not figure it out at first, but it's the eyes. Large cats, like lions and tigers, do not have the slit pupil eyes that a regular house cat does. They have rounded eyes, just like humans, and their eyes don't adjust the way that a house cat does. So, when you go around this gallery and start looking, you'll be able to tell which artists were pulling inspiration from house cats, for these larger cats, based on the shapes of the pupils in the eyes. The last section of the exhibition is called Cats and Play. Not only in this section do we look at more whimsical depictions of cats, like pictures of cats being put into very punny situations, but we also have works like this one to my left, which were literally meant to be used as play things for children. This is an example of a particular style of ukiyo-e print called omochae, literally meaning toy pictures. These were typically mass-produced, cheaply produced and unsigned by the artist because these were meant to be given to children and handled either to teach children how to read, to teach them socially acceptable behaviors, or like in the example of this particular print, this print was meant to be cut out. You see here on the vertical axis that these cats are upright and when you fold the print in half, you are able to cut the cats out and then cut their clothing out and literally make paper dolls for this cat family for children to play with. Because these prints were handled by children and were, like this print, usually destroyed in their first use, it is very rare to find omoche'e that are in this quality. What's even more rare is the fact that Utagawa Yoshifuji actually signed his name 
to this print, taking credit for this omocha egg, which is very, very rare. We've actually created takeaways for several of these omocha egg, and we've left them out in the gallery. And this one is one that you can actually take with you. So you can take them home and you can use these facsimile prints in the same way that these omocha egg were used hundreds of years ago. As I mentioned earlier, this exhibition is divided into two rotations. Some of the works that we've seen in today's video tour are specific to only rotation one, but some of them are specific to actually both rotations. So you'll have to come and see the show to figure out which ones they are. You can check our website at www.japansociety.org for more information about CATS related programming. But I do want to tell you two things before we go. One is that on Sunday, May 3rd, to coincide with Japan Society's full institution-wide family day, we will be having the ASPCA set up an adoption van in front of Japan Society's building. So people will actually be able to adopt their own cats on that day and take them home with you. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that besides the cat adoption drive on May 3rd, we've partnered with the ASPCA to give them a total of 5% of the Japan Society specific exhibition catalog for this show. So when you come and see the exhibition, and if you buy an exhibition catalog, you are automatically helping us give money to the ASPCA, which is an organization that helps find humane homes and helps change legislation for animal rights protection. So you're doing a good deed for cats all over the country. So hopefully we will see you here soon, and I hope that you enjoy the show.